To be honest, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. <laughs> Hey everyone, Jeremy here. Today I'm about to watch a video from Real Rejects that is about every clue in Morbius and Venom that indicate they are in a shared universe with uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, with, with Andrew Garfield. Now, I've actually wondered this myself for a while now. Um, I'm not going to say exactly why, but uh, if you haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, I would not uh, watch this video. <laughs> if you really want to see that before you watch this. But that said, uh, because of certain things that I, I, I've been going over in my head, the things that we've seen in Venom, and just even the things we've seen in the trailers for Morbius, I can't find anything that actually happened in The Amazing Spider-Man or contradicts it, or vice versa. So I'm wondering what they've found in this instance to corroborate this further. What's happening there, Reject Nation? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you guys can go ahead and leave a like, that would be very much appreciated. So what we're gonna do today with all the speculation, are they doing a new scene, adding it in of Andrew Garfield in the Morbius movie, now with the delay? Is it uh, the pandemic that delayed it, or are they trying to push an Andrew Garfield Okay, I hadn't heard there? this conspiracy I spent theory. I too much time obnoxiously obsessing about trying to find all these clues. And then on this journey, they ended up putting together a list of of all the clues that I could find that showcase that Venom and Morbius already take place within the amazing Spider-Man universe. I, I think it's hey, possible. Hey, Greg, what's going on? Hey, it's uh, Ryan from Screen Crush. Look, I just wanted to say, I I uh, <laughs> heard you were gonna do like an Easter egg breakdown thing, and I, I think that's adorable, but we think you should really leave that to the professionals like us. Don't embarrass yourself. Shut the f up, Ryan Airy. Shut the f all right, guys, let's do this. I, I got guys. like, I don't know, eight to 10 clues here. Some are more obvious Easter eggs. Some are clues that I'm sure you've already thought of. I'm going to talk about some variants. Going to talk about some things where you guys are already going here. So I could debunk this. Well, maybe this is actually not a debunk. Let's dive into this, guys. I think All you're right. going to enjoy I'm this curious. one. So let's curious. get the obvious ones out of the way. The ones that obviously come to mind. So the first one on the list would have to be the Oscorp logo featured within the Morbius trailer. So in the Amazing Spider-Man 1 I didn't catch Amazing that. Spider-Man 2, those buildings are already different. So if Morbius does take place in the Amazing Spider-Man universe, this would just be Oscorp's third building. <laughs> How many buildings do you need? Wait, That's Norm. what they do when they need to rebrand after some crazy stuff with Norman and Harry. They got to get a new building yeah. every time. Stuff like the that changes discourse. in movies. Not but as deal. we all know, that's the same logo from The Amazing Spider-Man. And of course, when the Poe establishes in No Way Home that there is no Oscorp in the MCU. The other obvious clue would be yeah, the that was a weird, newspaper in the weird Morbius trailer where the names Black confirm. Cat and Rhino are dropped. Now, John, oh, in, yes. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is there a Black Cat and Rhino? Not in the MCU and not not in the not Raimi CU. Exactly. It's just to, Amazing Spider-Man. To our understanding, because yes, Felicia Hardy, played by who? Mm -hmm. Played by Felicity Jones. Way to go, John. Hey. Was being set up to, of course, become Black Cat. And, of course, we saw Paul Giamatti. Brilliant performance. Mm -hmm. Understated performance. Subtle. Of the Rhino <laughs> in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, bam, you got those out of the way. Now, now of those two, uh, Giamatti, I love Paul Giamatti. But, man, they... I blame that a lot on the directing because they should have pulled him in. They should have pulled him in. He would have been great as Rhino if you'd have pulled him in. Not let him overact as much as he did because that was just, whew. But Felicity Jones' Black Cat, I really am upset we never got that because she uh, she is awesome. Felicity Jones is awesome. And it's not just because of, <laughs> because of I love her in Rogue One. But... It is also because she's just a great actress, and I think she could have pulled off Felicia, and that is... That always disappointed me that we never got to see that. Now this next clue I actually think is a very key and very important one that really does showcase that they are in the same world. And that is the cinematography, specifically the color palette, the lighting of them. The MCU is something that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this criticism of is a lot of them look the same, despite the fact that a lot of them are different characters, different genres, they tend to have a similar look. And well, that's for a really good reason. Yeah. And that's to establish that they are within the same world. Now, if you look 100%. at the amazing Spider-Man movies, and if you look at the Venom movie, Movies, you look at the Morbius trailer, they all share this similar look, this okay. similar blue color palette mm -hmm. aesthetic. 
aesthetic. It's a very specific there, Yeah, choice. I was going to say, the aesthetic is staying very the same. specific. It's like in The Matrix. They always have this green tint, except for The Matrix Resurrections. But The Matrix <laughs> shows you always have this green tint. The MCU films tend to have a similar look. Not always, but generally. And then here, with their Sony Spider-Man universe, they do look similar in cinematography. Yeah, which, I mean, you could easily go, well, it's just light and color. But if you think about it, too, the Sam Raimi films have their visual uniformity. Those were Sony movies, and they could have easily kept or mm-hmm. just gone away from that. They did with the blue going past the Tasm movies. They could have changed the color palette again, but they didn't. So you have Morbius and Venom looking and resembling those colors, that tone of visuals. So, hey, that's a pretty strong clue, I'd say. That's right, Ryan Airy. Other movies can have a similar color palette. It might just be a stylistic choice. But I, I, you know, I'll I'll, I'll agree. It's a bit of a reach, but it's not terribly. It is not terribly so. Not terribly so. Not out of the realm. All right, so the next clue on this list is actually coming from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I want to shout out Hayden King, who did remind me about this little Easter egg in the film. And it's actually at the one hour, three minute mark in the movie when Harry Osborn literally stumbles across some very important secret files in the film. They have a list of projects that Osborn has going on. And one of them is Venom Storage that's listed. (laughs) And another one is Dr. Morbius File as well. Already established in the Amazing Spider-Man universe. That's a list of Easter eggs. Yeah. And Ravencroft. Yeah. I just saw Ravencroft on there as well. It's going to come yeah. down the line, yeah. Another clue. The Ravencroft Institute. The Ravencroft Institute, big part of the Spider-Man world, essentially the Arkham Asylum of Spider-Man. If you guys saw the Venom movies, you know that they are definitely in the Venom. There's a whole big ass scene in Venom. Mm-hmm. Let there be carnage that yes. takes place at the Ravencroft Institute. The Ravencroft Institute definitely exists in the Amazing Spider-Man films as well, but they are not in the yeah. Sam Raimi movie movies to my understanding and they are not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies to my understanding as not well. Not that I'm that aware of. But I, I was literally like are they in there because I don't remember that but they are in no. the Amazing Spider-Man films. And before you jump on your keyboard because it is true the Ravenscroft in Amazing Spider-Man is in New York and the one in Venom is in California but just like with Oscorp you might have multiple locations of a place that deals with as high powered individuals as the Ravencroft Institute does you probably want to have one on either coast yeah. <laughs> at least. Yeah prisons are a friend Franchise, That's right, man. Same asylums are a franchise. We should man. open one up ourselves. There's Arkham Asylum <laughs> in like Minnesota. Definitely. And <laughs> University. Yeah. Passive income. All right, this next one on the list. Okay. No, I, I, I agree with that because you could have another branch. You just have another branch of Ravencroft. I, I could very much see that. It, that whole scene was ju- in The Amazing Spider Man was just to establish that Ravencroft existed. Also, it was an Easter egg. But it was also to establish Ravencroft existed. But it also didn't say that Ravencroft was in New York, by the way. I don't think it did. I'd have to go back. But I don't think it said it was specifically in New York. It just said Ravencroft Institute Files. So if that's the case, then it could have been just referencing the Ravencroft in San Francisco. The only other thing is the Venom. Because Venom shouldn't have been found yet in The Amazing Spider-Man. because Venom didn't come to Earth yet in The Amazing Spider-Man. So you would almost have to retcon that a little bit because it can't be Venom. It can't be Venom because it doesn't make sense in the context of Venom because he wasn't even on Earth yet. Unless I guess it's supposed to be about they're talking to Venom in space. That'd just be weird. So I would go with the nice Easter egg. It's supposed to be about something else, though. The Venom post credit scene and the Spider-Man No Way Home post credit scene. Now, we all thought that they were building up Venom to go fight Tom Holland. That doesn't seem like it's going to be the case. If you combine the scenes, it's like Venom was in the MCU for two minutes. And it just seemed like he was set up to leave behind the symbiote. A lot of people are theorizing yeah. he's probably just going back into the Amazing Spider-Man universe. I'd argue that he's already yeah. in the Amazing Spider-Man universe. I, I agree. rewatched the post credit scenes at not one point. Does he ever say or even indicate that he's never heard of Spider-Man? If you watch no. that Let There Be Carnage post no, scene, I, yeah, he's all flustered I guy, like, what room am I in? And then Spider-Man pops up on the TV, Venom takes over right away. Venom might have some type of history with some Spider-Man from a different universe or whatever, but Tom Hardy never ever states, like, who is that guy? Who's Spider-Man? I've never heard of Spider-Man. Not one point does he ever indicate that. I think a lot of us just sort of jump to that conclusion. Yeah, and, and I yes, did it in first. In the post-credit scene for No Way Home, he does say, maybe I should go talk to this Spider-Man. 
Spider-Man guy. Mm -hmm. He might have just learned with everyone else, like, oh, Spider-Man's Peter Parker. But he never indicates once that he's never heard of Spider-Man before. That's a good point. And two, I mean, if you look at the math of the movie, I mean, Tobey Maguire obviously got three films, so there's part of that. But, you know, he brings three villains with him. Andrew only brings two. This could be a clue that Venom and Andrew Garfield's Mm Spider-Man share the same universe, and we're just about to find that out in the next installment. Uh, I think a lot of people have talked about, and I just kind of want to add on a little bit more. Okay, but one thing I did notice in that, this is kind of um, a problem they had with Electro as well, and that is, you know, oh, it's only people that know Peter Parker is Spider-Man that came through. Well, that's just patently not true. Electro did not know. He, he had no idea that Peter was uh, Spider-Man. He, had, he, he learned that actually in the movie. We see him find that out. The same goes for Eddie. Now, as far as we know, Eddie doesn't know Peter Parker and Spider-Man. As far as we know, it doesn't seem that way because he he was still wrapping his head around the whole MCU of the in the bar. Again, they didn't really make a reference, so it's possible that he does know Spider Man. But I also don't think, from a perspective of making a new movie, I don't think you would start another Venom movie or a new Spider Man movie where those two just know each other. No, we we want to see that. We want to see that meeting. We want to see what. It looks like for those two to get together. Ah, but that is, that is, that's a problem with No Way Home. But they are dead on the money that, no, at no time does Eddie say he's never heard of Spider-Man. And at no time, Venom just seems captivated by Spider-Man. That was his thing. He was kind of captivated by Spider-Man more to it. See, in the Morbius trailer, they did have that image that was going around. It was a really popular one from the trailers of mm-hmm. the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man murder. said murderer on it. Created a lot of confusion. It's like, okay, that's weird. It's a Tobey Maguire one, murder. Maybe that's in reference to Tom Holland being accused of murdering Mysterio. But yeah, why that's the why Tobey everybody... Maguire one? I think a lot of life. clues do point to this. In Spider-Man No Way Home, he does have that speech where he gets very emotional. He's talking about after the death of Gwen Stacy, he tried being the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He stops and pulling his punches. At some point, he stopped pulling his punches. He got rageful. Maybe he accidentally murdered someone. That's my thinking. Able, or a few, yeah. yeah. That's Maybe my thinking. At this point in the franchise, he's branded as a criminal. Because obviously, by the time we catch up with him in No Way Home, some time has passed. And okay. too, I mean, their suits kind of look similar, so maybe that could also be some kind of gray area they're trying to ride at Sony. I could see why they might mistakenly put a different picture up there, like within the world of the movie, because it's not a photo of Spider-Man. It's well, an animated image. While that image is based off of Tobey Maguire's suit, it's ultimately an animated image from the Spider-Man PS4 game. So one way they could chalk it up is that someone created this image. It's someone designed it. It's not yeah. an actual photo of it. It's an inter- Well, the thing is, uh, uh, with that photo, look at Andrew's... Uh, they pulled the uh, image from Amazing Spider-Man. That, that one uh, we don't need to worry about. It's the suit he wore in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 is practically identical to Toby's. It, it just all but identical to Toby's, just in slight variations. So, yeah, I don't, I, I, I see no problem at all with that being interpretation of the Spider-Man Peter. suit. So murderer could be slapped on for Andrew Garfield, as we've seen in every freaking Marvel trailer as of late, and especially the No Way Home trailer. It's really easy to remove characters. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, especially characters. digitalized fo- digitized photos of people. If you can do that with characters who are moving in trailers, you could easily do that with a photo. Maybe the Spider-Man PS4 game is canon in the Tasm universe. Let's not go down a wormhole. <laughs> <here, John. laughs> Matrix Resurrections. Let's do it. Here's one that actually really stood out to me a lot. That. The fact that we were pretty much made aware that Sony has been trying to get a Sinister Six movie off the ground for quite some time. You got whatever's going on with the MCU, and then you got the what a lot of people are just dubbing the Venomverse mm-hmm. over at Sony. And Sony's been having plans to try to get a Sinister Six movie off the ground for a while. And it seems pretty indicative that they are building up to that. You got Morbius, you got Venom, you got Craven the Hunter, and then it's like who knows who's gonna fill those other three slots for the Sinister Six. But Amazing Spider-Man 2 did end with the character the gentleman who is revealed in a trilogy of spider-man novels i just learned this recently so he's revealed to be the super criminal the gentleman who is assembling the sinister six so if this does take place within the amazing spider-man universe that's just another clue that indicates towards that since obviously if sony's going to be doing a sinister six it would be comprised of the characters they have control over and probably ones that they've introduced up until this point rather than surprising you with a whole new roster so another
another one here this is something that a lot of people were pointing out as well is in spider-man no way home it just sounded like a funny line he does say he wants to fight an alien andrew garfield yes says that. it's a really yes, funny he does. line it's really it's part yes, of the he moment does. And maybe it was improvised who really knows it's one of the maybe first jokes i made after the movie to my friends for a possible moment in time where andrew garfield will either get uh, the symbiote or one he, moment in time <laughs> 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 I'm thinking of references. or he's able to fight venom and that was a tease for what's to come yes it's both I, <laughs> I think it's a tease and if everybody responds well which they have it will be made reality that, <laughs> you know, I, Iron Man I think a lot of this is Spider-Man and then fan reaction that I think they have been waiting be for the fan reaction the ones that I feel like most people would point to and go debunked the Daily Bugle logo and Vulture first off it's just a logo <laughs> <laughs> they could have updated their logo <laughs> and it just represents the Sam Raimi one yeah, yeah. Uh, also, keep in mind, Morbius, Venom, they take place years after The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, real time has passed. We're, we're, what, the 10 years since then at this point? I expect that the next time we see The Amazing Spider-Man Peter, it's really going to have been that long or close to it. So, yeah, updating your banner. That's not anything new. It's, and in multiple pretty universes, simple though, right? yeah. <laughs> maybe they have the same logo in a couple of universes. It's very likely that that could have just been the case, yes. all right? And then two, with Vulture, I think a very obvious explanation for this could be he's just a variant. The fact that we have J.K. Simmons playing different versions of J. Jonah Jameson, because the mm, one in yeah. the Sam Raimi but, films and the one in the MCU are different J. Jonah Jamesons. I think they've mm -hmm. made that abundantly clear. And now here with Vulture, it honestly could just be the exact same case. Which I'm I think would actually kind of, kind of work, that. partly because of the business aspect of like Homecoming was made much more under the Sony umbrella than the current Marvel Sony arrangement. And also, of all the characters, I feel like it wouldn't be disappointing to introduce a variant Michael Keaton vulture that's still the vulture, but just gets to have a new character history, yeah, you know? exactly. So, guys, with that in mind, do you think that Morbius and Venom are actually tied into the Amazing Spider-Man universe? Are there other clues that we completely did not mention today that you think could be totally added onto this list? Put it down in the comments below. Subscribe, click that bell, hit that like button. All right, on that last one especially, yeah, the Michael Keaton thing, I kind of have wondered the whole time since after seeing no way home since it doesn't appear to be in the same universe as the mcu i'm guessing that has to be just sony's version of vulture and it's going to be you know similar uh, you just played by the same character just like they said j jonah jameson that it, that is 100 percent the way i took that when once I saw No Way Home. At first, when I saw No Way Home, I think before all of us saw, saw No Way Home, we wondered, okay, it, are we crossing universes or is the Sony-verse coming into the MCU? Is Peter, I personally thought Peter was gonna, Peter and his characters were gonna go into the Sony-verse. But now it just seems like uh, Keaton's gonna exist as the Vulture in Morbius's slash Venom's universe. Overall, I do really like this breakdown. I think a couple of the items were a little weaker than others. Things like, you know, the color palette. But that is true. That is very true. Movies like this, universes like this, try to keep a similar palette in order to make it seem, you know, like the same universe. To keep that consistent tone. To keep that consistent aesthetic so that everyone watching it goes, oh yeah, I'm watch this takes place in the same universe as this other movie. But overall, yeah, they they mirrored a lot of my own thoughts in this. I really think that, I don't know if it's by happenstance or if Sony planned it, but in either case, they have really woven their newest movies, Venom and now Morbius, so that they don't contradict the things that happened in The Amazing Spider-Man. I mean, there are some rough edges, things you would have to smooth out a little, but not a lot. I mean, think about the rough edges that the MCU has had, and we just accept them if they're given a nice little explanation. Infinity Gauntlet being one of those things that I keep thinking of from Odin's throne room or trophy room. And I know I mentioned that maybe Eddie and Spider-Man or Peter don't have a history, but it is possible they have a history, but he still doesn't know that he's Spider-Man. And he obviously wasn't Venom when they met either, uh, because that would actually make a little more sense. Now that I'm thinking of it, if it was more of a, he got brought over because he knew Peter, and maybe he knew Peter because he used to work in New York. He used to be a photographer at the Daily Planet. Peter used to intern there, as last I knew. And 
So there you go. They, they actually worked together for a short time and maybe that's how they know each other. And he did take pictures of Spider-Man or he did investigate Spider-Man before coming out to LA or LA, San Francisco. So you could massage it in that yes, Eddie knows Peter or Eddie at least knows Spider-Man to a degree. I still stand by, it's a lot more fun to see them meet. Or I mean, it, it can be a meet again as far as hey, it's Eddie and hey, it's Peter. But as far as Venom and Spider-Man, we, we, we wanna see that meeting. At this point, I really do think that fans may be willing this into happening, that, that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man may actually become the Spider-Man for the Sony universe, just from fan response. I mean, everyone, everyone, in, myself, my friends I went with, all of us old folks, you know, we we walked out of that going, yeah, no, MVP was Andrew Garfield. So I really do believe that the response, the absolute love that he has gotten since this movie is going to will into existence. The fact that he gets either another movie or, you know, he shows up in the next Venom. He shows up in Morbius as a cameo, something along those lines, maybe not a full on movie yet, but at least introduce him as Spider-Man again in that universe and watch everybody's heads explode. And again, I don't know if that was their plan to begin with or, and it's more likely this, they were testing the waters. They thought, oh no, we think people are gonna love him in this. It's probably tested well, blah, 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 but we're not gonna commit until we see the fan reaction after the movie comes out. Well, movie's out, <laughs> movie's out. And fans absolutely embraced him. So I, I truly think, I truly think he is going to end up as Spider-Man. I absolutely, I, I truly believe we are because just because of how much fans have really enjoyed seeing this Spider-Man again. All right, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. Did you poke holes in more of those theories than I did? Is there something that really stands out as no, you're hanging your hat on this. This is, this is the absolute reason why <laughs> it is in the same universe. Maybe you have your own clues that were not mentioned here that, that I haven't discussed at all. I, I absolutely want to hear those. So leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely and it just lets me make more content for you guys. All right, and before I go, whatever you are getting up to today, whatever uh, you know, trials and tribulations you might be faced with, I hope you can take some time for yourself, enjoy at least a small part of the day, and you know, start fresh again tomorrow. I'll see you all next time.